right, hello wine drinking people. Today is Wednesday, October 6th, and we've got uh, still quite a few events to make it through this week, and then next week, four or five events next week, man. It's going to be a rough month for me, but a lot of great drinking. Check it out, all of the stuff we've got going on on our calendar of events, on our website. But what did I have to drink yesterday? Man, yesterday was another marathon. All right, well, first up, we had uh, quite a few suppliers in the store yesterday. We had uh, Joseph from uh, <clears throat> from uh, the Rubicon Estates in yesterday, and this is Francis Ford Coppola's winery. It's the old Ingold Nook, the old Gustav Niebaum property, very famous estate in Napa Valley in Rutherford, making some outstanding wines. You know, definitely kicking it up a notch. I think they finally found their stride, and uh, a lot of uh, the, these new releases, some of the best wines that I've ever tasted from this property. They've moved the Diamond Series over to Sonoma Valley. They bought uh, Chateau Souverain and all that stuff is over there now. Just the estate wines being presented at their Napa Valley property. Well, we started out with the Blanc Cano. Uh, this is the first time I've ever had this wine. This is an interesting blend. Uh, Southern Rhone style blend. Roussan, Marsan, Viognier and uh, all organically farmed like a lot of people are going to today. Organic or biodynamic. Uh, very refined wine with a lovely bouquet of acacia flower, lemon blossom, tangerine notes, uh, white peach, a little flinty minerally note to that, and a little hint of beeswax as well, something I get from wines from the Southern Rhone. Uh, lovely richness on the palate with lots of that tree fruit showing, uh, apples and peaches, and then uh, that lovely floral note showing as well that was in the nose through the finish. A very balanced wine with excellent length and lovely acidity. One of the best Southern Rhone wines I've ever had from California. It's $46.50, folks. This is not cheap. All right, next up, the Rubicon Estate Merlot. This is the first time I've ever had this wine. Wow, most excellent, one of the best Merlots I've had this year, 2007. A great vintage. It's made from Clone 1 and Clone 3. And uh, <clears throat> this wine is going to be discontinued in 2009. <sighs> One of the best wines I've ever had from them. and <laughs> First time I've ever had it, and they're discontinuing it in a few years. Well, Merlot has been a tough sell, especially at the higher end. And this wine's not cheap. It's $43.50. If we have enough, we may use it in a gift box this year. That's how good it was. Lovely fresh plowed herbs, uh, earth frying herbs, and a lo lovely toasty oak spice to the fresh black plum and black cherry fruit. Very elegant, very European in style, very old world, but big and chewy on the tongue. No mistaking this wine for California once you put it in your mouth uh, with uh, firm tannins. Um, really lovely texture on the mouth. Merlot kind of has a little more weight on the front of your mouth than the back. And uh, I don't know, in a blind tasting, you might guess this wine is Cabernet. Lots of sweet plum and cherry fruit. Elegant and refined style with layers of spice, tobacco notes on the finish. Really nice. Most excellent. Next up, we had the RC Reserve. Another wine I've had for the first time from uh, the Rubicon Estate. This is a Syrah. A little bit of petite Syrah on the blend. Lovely notes of blackberry, black plum fruit on the nose. Rich and ripe with some lovely black spice. Toasty oak, espresso, bitter chocolate. Really complex and aromatic bouquet here. Incense-like spice. Big and chewy on the tongue. Loads of black fruit, black plum, black cherry. Liqueur-like in concentration. But still silky sands and tannins and lovely savoriness on the finish. If you've got a big overblown Syrah like this, you need balance. And this wine is balance a mixture of California and Northern Rhone, another excellent wine. All right, Edizione Pannoni, Zinfandel. All right, this is a wine that, uh, well, I didn't know this, but this is the only wine that has a national monument on the label. You think Francis Ford Coppola's got a little bit of pull, the United States government being able to pull this off? Well, uh, Joseph said that he just caught them at a weak moment. It's got the Statue of Liberty on it, and it also has uh, the Bay of Naples, I believe, which is where his family left Italy, and it's where they arrived in the New World, kind of showing his journey from where he came from and bringing it back to his heritage. Zinfandel is a grape that they grow in Puglia, while well, Primitivo is. It's almost genetically identical to uh, the Zinfandel grape. A lovely raspberry coulis, red cherry pie-like fruit, a little bit of red licorice, raw fresh flowers, a little white chocolate note there. Very aromatic. Smooth and velvety on the tongue with a nice texture. Uh, nice finish, but a little light on the tannins. And one of the reasons I don't like Zinfandel, tannin, one of the things you need in balance for a balanced wine. Next up, the Rubicon Estate 2006 cask. This is a wine we've had on our best of list the last couple years. An excellent wine. Lovely red currant black cherry fruit on the nose. Nice toasty oak spikes. A little milk chocolate. Very forward and appealing. Smooth polished style of Cabernet Sauvignon with round tannins and lovely toasty oak spice complementing the fruit on the finish. Really nice again this year. Next up, the top wine, the Rubicon. This wine's got a little bit of Petit Verdot and a little bit of Cabernet Franc in it, but mostly Cabernet Sauvignon. Deep, dark, 
currant berry fruit, cassis, pretty toasty oak spice, espresso, dark chocolate, very concentrated rich, about 7,000 cases of this estate wine produced, big and chewy, lots of fruit here, lots of everything though, lovely oak spice, lovely freshness on the finish, uh, ripe round tannins, this is a wine that's meant for the ages, meant to last, it's in one of these big bottles, it's the only thing I don't like about it, please people, if you're listening, producers, we don't need a big bottle to show people you have big wine, it just costs more to transport it, it's not green, no one's trying to be green today. It's the worst thing you can do if you're trying to be biodynamic and green and friendly to the earth is put your top wine in a big, clumsy, awkward bottle. Nice package, though, Francis. All right, nice lineup of wines, too. Next up, we had um, Terlato. It's deja vu. Wasn't Terlato just in yesterday? How many people do these guys have in the market? I don't know, man, but they're getting some deep penetration here at the Wine Watch. And uh, we had some other uh, friends that we haven't had for a long time uh, in the store with them. Hannah, uh, some great wines from Sonoma. We had their Sauvignon Blanc, fresh melon, lime, cit lime grape, citrus fruit. Nice note, a little note of fresh cut grass there as well. Fresh and light on the tongue. Very refreshing style. A little bit of maybe fresh baled hay also. Clean and refreshing finish. Melon and fig fruit there. Uh, very nice little wine, 18 bucks. Their Cabernet Sauvignon, Alexander Valley. This is one of the top areas in Sonoma for Cab. Hannah uh, has got 20% Merlot in their cab. By law, you can add up to 25% of another varietal in California. Lovely black cherry and plum-like fruit on the nose. Classic wine. Classic Alexander Valley cab. Some fresh plowed earth. A little bit of milk chocolate. Lovely freshness on the tongue. Lovely balance. And a nice little value of 27 bucks. Next up, we had an uh, Italian, Mazzoni, uh, Toscano Rosso. Eh, it's okay, but a little bit overpriced. Uh, 18 bucks. I can give you several things that are this good for less money than that. A lot of competition in this category. And um, next up, we had the Camarcanda from Gaia's property uh, in the Maremma on the Tuscan coast, the Promise. And uh, this is the only wine with a little bit of Sangiovese in it from this property. It's a blend of Syrah and Merlot, the majority of it. But lovely, smoky, toasty oak, fresh earth, notes of cocoa, uh, herbs, really complex bouquet here. This is their entry level wine, but uh, you wouldn't know it from the palate smooth and polished very elegant with layers of nuance earth firm tannins very balanced with nice minerality on the finish excellent wine that's what you expect from angelo gaia next up the magari and uh, this is a blend of 50 percent merlot 22 percent cabernet and 25 percent cabernet franc i think it's the cabernet franc that gives it this wine this exotic kind of floral note to it but really lovely fresh plowed black earth truffle black spices toasty oak uh really uh complex bouquet black currants black cherries uh, thick and chewy on the tongue, lots of berry fruits, and uh, maybe showing just a little bit um, disjointed at the moment with the tannin, uh, toasty oak, maybe need a little bit of time, but uh, has all the components there, and nice freshness on the finish as well. Next up, probably the best banules that I've ever had. I don't know if that's uh, you know saying much, but uh, you know this is a, a dessert wine that's great with chocolate by itself. A lot of times it can be a little awkward, uh, but this wine had this lovely sweet black cherry and raspberry coulis-like fruit to it, kind of dessert confectioner-like with little balsamic and uh, lovely richness on the palate. Very good even without chocolate and uh, lovely freshness and this perfume floral note echoing in the finish. Really nice, one of the best banyoles that I've ever had. All right, next up. We had our friend from Beau Frères in, and, um, you know, we get to taste these wines every year. We're pretty lucky here at the Wine Watch. We get to see a lot of good juice come across the table during the course of the day. The 07s, I was not delighted about. Still not delighted about the 07s. I wasn't surprised that, hey, what a surprise. They're here still. He hasn't sold them all. 07 was a difficult vintage in the Willamette. These are not bad wines. They're just a little expensive for what they are, I feel. We had the 08s next to them. It's clear to me 08 is a better vintage in each and every case here with both rares. And uh, I like the estate wine the best. The upper terrace and the estate usually are kind of a toss-up for me. But uh, excellent wines. You can read the reviews on those. Maybe just a little pricey, $115 a bottle for the upper terrace for the 07 and the 08. Can we get a little price break on these wines when they're a little lighter in style like the 07s? We got to pay full price every year? I don't know. Well, the reviews are up there. If you guys are interested, I think they make great wines at Beaufrere's. But again, the 07's a little pricey for what they are. Okay, and uh, let's see. Well, then we had our Bordeaux tasting last night, 2009. A slew of great stuff. Bill Blatch, the Indiana Jones value hunter from Bordeaux, was here. And he is an enlightening man to talk to. When you talk to him about Bordeaux, man, this guy has got just volumes of encyclopedic-like knowledge 
We had about eight different Bordeaux Superiors. These wines were nice, but uh, the Larkin and the Burrell are the two that we have in the store at $9.50. Are you kidding me? $9.75, whatever they are. Great little wines, no oak, pure, unadulterated Bordeaux, mostly Merlot, lovely fresh fruit. These wines are a sign of what is to come from 09, possibly the greatest vintage, young vintage, because these wines, even the barrel samples, were very drinkable. The white was great, and the La Florida or the best value in Sauternes from 09. If you want to read about that, check out all the reviews on what I drank last night from the 09 Bordeaux tasting. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasone, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.